is uh, the last time uh, we stopped over here uh, so I have done uh, some sort of a CSS external CSS importing uh, so that's why we have red background uh, for now I can uh, simply make it as white <laughs> otherwise this red thing will be uh, somewhat uncomfortable okay uh, so today I'm going to um, focus more about the database class because uh, we almost complete the core class and the controller class and uh, we can move to the database class so I will close the other tabs okay um, so before moving on to the database make sure you have toggle uh, the mysql uh, server on your exam <laughs> after you toggle that server you can simply go to the local host php my admin <laughs> it take a while to load I right okay uh, so <coughs> here is the place where we are going to uh, implement our database uh, which if you are follow with if you are familiar with the uh, database and you know, mysql things like that you may already know about this php my admin it is pretty much simple all you have to do is uh, just to create a database and uh, do uh, or execute to SQL queries to insert or retrieve data out of it. Uh, so in order to create the data, either you can uh, use the SQL commands, or maybe you can just uh, use this existing option. So uh, in my case, uh, I will simply make a database known as Simple Epic DB. And uh, make sure you are following the UTF-8 general CI. Then simple, simply click create. Okay, now our database has been created. So now all we have to do is uh, create tables and you know store data and things like that. But before doing all of this stuff, we must need to connect this database with our uh, framework so we are implementing that interface uh, in uh, within the PHP and uh, within the MySQL database using PHP uh, data objects which is typically known as PDO the so PDO is some sort of a uh, object relational mapping it's not a totally object relational mapping but it's some sort of object relational mapping uh, where we can execute our own SQL queries uh, inside PHP so it will uh, do the corresponding manipulations uh, to the uh, database <coughs> so, so uh, first we must uh, specify our configurations because uh, there could be having so many databases inside uh, our server so we need to specifically say to use this simple epic db and what are the usernames what are the username password and things like that so uh, first i think we can move to the configuration folder so these are the current configurations that i have um, so i can implement the db or database configurations over here <coughs> so first need to have we need to have a db host what is our db host basically it's a local host so if you are moving to the uh, any other uh, database host you need to specify which sort of a host that you are using in my case it's local host and uh, you need to specify 
is the DB user. So in my case, it's just a root. Okay, I think uh, it's in the home, I guess. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I think uh, I'm using the default options. That's why I'm having the use as root and I have no password. <coughs> Sorry. So I can simply use db use as root and the db password as um i will say db pass or maybe password as empty because i'm not using any sort of a password but if you are using any sort of a password i'm not uh, sorry i'm not using any sort of a password so that's why i am specifying it as empty but if you are using any uh, password over there you have to specify uh, which is the password and uh, it can define the database name so in my case it's simple epic db okay so those are the basic configurations we need to have uh, then we can move to the database class and start creating the corresponding video video class so i'll first create the class as database <coughs> sorry then uh, i need to uh, take this configuration data to this class so basically i can declare some private variables like this and db host and another private variable for the db user as db user and another private variable for the db password as db password and another private member variable for the db name that is taken from the db name uh, configuration then uh, i need three other variables uh, which is my database host i will name it as uh, dbh then i need my statement so we can be having uh, any sort of a statement over here in maybe it could be uh, inserting selecting deleting updating or anything related to my sql and uh, obviously it will invoke some sort of errors so we need to have some sort of exception handling therefore i will use error as a exception attacking variable <laughs> then uh, initially i must be having the constructor primary constructor uh, so within this primary constructor i can specify the dns right so this dns is uh, something related to pdo uh, so if you are not familiar with pdo maybe simply uh, google some tutorials okay uh, So there are more than enough tutorials in PDO data objects, PHP data objects. So you can uh, get used to it. Okay. So I'm not I'm not going to cover uh, these basic stuffs in this tutorial. I'm I will just uh, more focus on the framework. Right. Uh, so we can declare our DSN. So this DSN you have to follow this specific. Uh, string SQL host as uh, this host sorry um yeah this host then semicolon db name as the db name db 
key name right then uh, we need to declare some options because yeah now we are going to instantiate the php data object inside our script therefore i will use an array to specify all the corresponding options that i am going to use inside the pdo so pdo attribute persistent because our database is itself persistent so we need to uh, somewhat use uh, a persistent data structure over here so pdo ttr error mode is again required because if we specify our queries in some sort of a wrong manner uh, we need to uh, easily understand where we did the error therefore uh, we need to uh, specify the error mode options as well uh, then we can uh, you know uh, somewhat retrieve the uh, database related exceptions so video i need to declare it as the error mode exception right then uh, i think we can now create the pdo instance yeah so instantiate pdo uh, so i'm going to follow exception handling over here because you know it is very obvious we can uh, do some sort of errors when it comes to these sql queries uh, at the development phase i guess so video exceptions will be passed as exception over here so we can catch the exception if there is an error first i will uh, store that exception inside the error variable the message then i will simply echo what is the error right uh, and inside the try block i'm going to uh, initialize my dbh dbh so i'm passing new video over here so i will i can take a php data object to the dbh variable uh, so this dsn users and password and uh, options need to be passed so it will simply re return a php data object to this variable right uh, then i think those are the stuffs uh, then we can uh, instantiate a model so in my case i will instantiate a model for the pages so i have already implemented the controller for pages which is uh, named as pages uh, so in order to uh, uh, uniquely identify what is the model i will use uh, m as a prefix m pages .php. So, whenever I declare a new model, I will just simply use m as a prefix. But uh, it's up to you, you can uh, make your own models uh, with any sort of naming conventions. So, since I have declared this model as m pages, I need to instantiate the same class over here. Right? Uh, then I can simply declare a variable uh, to grant this database object, uh, not uh, database PDO, uh, to this uh, PHP script. I will name it as DB. So whenever this script is constructing or this script is called construct. Whenever this object is called, I need to instantiate 
this database class over here so I can simply do that using uh, this TV equals new database right so now the database class is instantiated over here or database object is instantiated over here now uh, yeah so we need to uh, connect controller with this model as well as I explained in the pre very previous videos uh, we need to connect this model with the corresponding controller so in my case the controller is pages so whenever this pages class is constructing I also must construct is corresponding m pages uh, model as well so you can simply do that uh, using our core class statement because no not the core class uh, the controller class statement model uh, this method so let me go to the pages controller again so I can uh, make a new variable so in my case let me make it as pages model you can have any sort of a name but I'm, I am following this naming convention because it's obvious uh, then I can simply call that model method with respect to this m underscore pages database class or model right now I have been instantiated uh, model inside the controller and the model itself instantiate this database class and this database class is itself instantiate uh, PDO or PHP data object okay so PDO is capable of dealing with uh, this MySQL server PHP my admin MySQL server okay so that's how the connection works initially uh, the controller calls to the model sorry the controller calls to the corresponding model the model calls to the corresponding database class then the database class calls corresponding PD object then the PD object is some sort of a worker or some sort of an intermediary that connects these PHP stuffs and the uh, MySQL stuffs okay. <coughs> sorry so uh, I guess that's it for now and I can you know simply refresh this page so it won't invoke any sort of errors which means up to now we are correct okay uh, yeah so I think uh, for this video this stuff will be enough uh, in the next video I will uh, complete this database class thank you